All right then, so now we have a stream set up right here inside our database file, which is listening for data inside a particular document of the user. Now, what we'd like to do is work with the data that we get back from that stream inside this settings widget right here. Now, to do this, we could use the provider package again, as we have done in the past, but I wanna show you now a different way of listening to a stream and using the data, and that is by using the built-in stream builder that comes along for the ride with Flutter. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is twofold, really. First of all, it's always good to know multiple ways to do things, and secondly, we only need to access the stream data in this single widget. We don't need to access it anywhere else by saying something like provider.off, you know, to access it in different widgets. And when that's the case, that we only need to use the stream in one single widget, we can just as easily use the built-in stream builder. Now, you can actually use the stream builder when you need to use the data in multiple widgets in a tree, but it does become a little harder to maintain having to pass data down from widget to widget. And you could end up with carrier widgets which don't use the data but have to pass it on to a child widget, etc. But anyway, for this case, it's absolutely fine to use. So let's see how the stream builder works. So the first thing we need to do is actually come down here and instead of the form being the root widget, we need to wrap this in a stream builder. We can do that by going to the actions menu and going to wrap with stream builder. Now this stream builder also specifies what type of data we're gonna be getting down this stream. Now the type of data we're gonna be getting back is user data based on our user model. So let's say, user data and I'm going to press tab to import that at the top as well which we can see right here okay so this is the type of data coming down the stream and next we have to specify the stream in itself now we want to use the stream that we added to the database service class so let's say database service and tab to import that at the top we also need to pass in a uid right here remember because the database service class expects a uid and we use that to find the document which matches up to the user who is logged in now remember we have access to the user who is logged in via the provider the provider we used inside the wrapper so if i go over here we can see that right here we have access to this user in the same way so let me grab that and go back to the settings form and we can paste it inside this build function right here because we need the context and we also need to import provider. So let me do that at the top. I'm gonna import and it's going to be provider. So let me press enter to import that. Okay, so now we have access to the current user logged in and we can access the ID from that user. So let me say now that the UID that we pass into this database service instance is gonna be the user.uid, okay? So we're passing in the ID that matches the current ID of the logged in user. Therefore, when we use the stream to get the user data inside this service class, we can base it on the user's ID and we're gonna match that up to the Firestore document for that user. All right, so now we need the stream name, which we called user data. So user data, like so. So now we're listening to this stream inside this widget, right? So inside the builder, which is the second property of the stream builder, we get a function and this function returns a widget tree. Now, before we start using the data inside this function, we actually want to check that we have data coming down this stream. And by the way, this snapshot right here, this is a reference to the data as it comes down the stream. Do not get it mixed up with the snapshot from Firebase. It's nothing to do with Firebase, this. It's kind of Flutter's implementation of data coming down a stream. So every time we get some kind of data down the stream, this snapshot refers to it, okay? So what I want to do is check that we have data on this snapshot before we start to do anything and output the data inside this widget tree. Because remember, this data is initially coming from Firebase and it might take a second or two to actually come to us down this stream. So I don't want to try and do anything with the data on this snapshot until it definitely has data on it. So let me do a little if check first of all. We take the snapshot and we say has data. Now this returns either true or false. If we have data on this snapshot, some user data, and it's ready to use, this returns true, and therefore we can use it inside this if check. Otherwise, we can do something else, and we'll address that shortly. 
So what I want to do, if this is the case, is return the form because we're going to return the form with a lot of different values embedded in it that we get back from that snapshot. So let me cut that and paste it right here. And now I think we just need to scoot this in. So let me go up to here and press tab to scoot this in. OK, so if we have data, then we can actually access the data on the snapshot. And we do that by saying snapshot if I can spell it correctly, dot data. OK, now I'm going to store this inside a variable and the type of variable is going to be a user data object. So that's the type. And let's just call it user data. And that's equal to the snapshot dot data. So we can reference this now down inside our form to output the data of that user, the data that's currently stored for them. So, you know, like down in these different form fields, we have, for example, a value for the drop down field and initially it's going to be zero because we don't yet have a value for current sugars because they've not changed it yet. But what we could do is change this initial fallback value from zero to whatever is stored in their current user data in the Firestore document. So we can say user data to get this value that we receive down the stream and then say dot and it's going to be the sugars like so. And now if I save this, and come over here, I'm going to refresh and come over here and then I'm going to go to settings and we can see now it's zero sugars. That is actually the default value. So it's not changed because right now it's zero sugars anyway, but we can do the same thing for the text form field as well. So we can set an initial value for this. So I'll say initial value and set that to be the user data and then the name property in that. So if I save this now, and then we go to settings. We can see now new crew member appears here. So the current value of this. Awesome. OK, let's do the same thing for this down here where we do the current strength. Remember, we use either the value that they've changed it to if it exists. But to begin with, that's null. So we default to 100 instead of defaulting to 100. Let's say user data dot strength. And let's do the same thing for the values down here the default value of or the default color of the active color and the inactive color. OK, so it's going to load the data from the user Firestore document. And when it loads this form, if this doesn't exist, if they've not changed it yet, then it's going to fall back to this value, which they are currently set to. Now, again, it's not going to change in the form itself because the initial value is the same as what we applied before 100. But if we go to settings, then we should still see zero sugars and this thing over here. OK, so now we have the default values inside the form. Now, what I'm going to do is just load an else case here to be some kind of widget that's going to show a loader. And in fact, we'll use our current loader. So I'm going to say return right here, the loader. And I'm going to press tab on. I can't find it. So let's just say loader. And I think it's called loader. Let me just double check. It's called load loading. OK, so let's go to the settings form again and it's called loading. OK, so press tab and it's going to auto import that at the top. So this is the case if there's no data ready yet. I'm going to press save. And now if I go to settings, you can see it has loaded already, so it's absolutely fine. But if there's no data, if this if check fails up here, if this is false and we don't have data, it's going to show the loading screen instead. OK, so now we have the default values inside this form. Next, we need to actually update those values in the Firestore documents when a user clicks on this update button. And we're going to do that in the very next video. And by the way, we'll see more of this in action as we update it, because when we update it and go off the settings panel again, when we open it again, it should be what they updated it to and what is currently inside the Firestore document for that user. I hope that all makes sense.